it's just one of those bands and one of those albums where if I think too hard about um, why they're not a hundred times bigger than they are, it just uh, just really makes me angry. Now then, guys, Quinn's Dude here, back on Rad Music Chat channel. Thanks again for joining. Uh, if you're new here, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. That way you get told whenever I uh, upload new content. And also, if you enjoy this video down below, thumbs up button if you smash that, please. And uh, any comments, get them down below as well. So today's Should Have Been Huge album is a British three-piece um, punk rock outfit Templeton Peck and it's their fifth studio album from 2018 um, called Watching the World Come Undone. But the brief for this should have been huge series is basically um, to celebrate albums that perhaps um, weren't necessarily unsuccessful but just um, not as as lauded and celebrated as, as as i feel that they deserve to be so with templeton peck's watching the world come undone um the genres that uh um i would attach to this one are melodic punk rock skate punk and post hardcore it has to be said though that templeton peck have been a band for uh, over 15 years now um they've toured with the likes of rise against who they are very inspired by um the offspring um, they enjoy a really uh, strong following on the continent, places like Belgium and Germany, where they often play um, punk rock festivals there to large crowds. Before we actually get into discussing uh, the contents of this album, it's very worthwhile noting that um, frontman and, and bass player um, Neil Mitchell, his lyrical content, although giving some ambiguity so you can kind of interpret it in your own way, which a lot of great lyricists, you know, can do. Um, it's very obviously that he is uh, um, very motivated and, and, and pissed off by uh, socio-political um, issues. At the time of writing Watching the World Come Undone, you would have had, uh, you know, Trump was in power, Boris was still ubiquitous everywhere, um, Brexit was looming large and no one really knew what it was going to, to mean. So Nowhere to Hide kicks off the album's 10 tracks and uh, just over half an hour of music and it just fades in, no, um, no ceremony, no big long intro, um, thick guitars, the bass is nice and high in the mix, the drums are um, really fat sounding without being overpowering. I mean, the you know, as a as a trio, they just sound really great on record. Um, Nowhere to Hide is uh, essentially is a really good calling card for what Templeton Peck are all about uh, lyrically. Um, you know, it's about serving. Uh, you know how we live in servitude, making rich people richer, basically, and. Uh, um, how there's just no escape in the fact that um, we're all slaves to the man, essentially. I will repeat this throughout talking about this album, but this uh, track possesses um, something that uh, could arguably what, be what Templeton Peck are best at, and that is choruses. They just have such great ears for um, melody and and. Um, a hooky chorus without being um, twee or hokey, just really, really powerful melodic choruses. Oblivious, I found at the time of uh, first listening and the, the first few times that I was sort of taking in this album, Oblivious was an interesting track too because it kind of feels more like it would be maybe a track four or a track seven or eight. Um, it, it does slow things down somewhat after the really punchy start uh, of Noah Tide. But it works. Over time, you, you really get fond of this. This was the, the track that I found hardest to get into. Um, but um, it, this this sort of displays the band's more post-hardcore influences and, and, and all the better for it. Um, there's a vocal line in it as well that uh, is just um, 
to die for. The vocal line in question in Oblivious comes in at uh, 45 seconds into the track. With track three, we're back to um, we're back to some pummeling punk rock um, with The Awakening. This is, uh, I'm gonna stick my neck out here and this is a hefty statement, but this track is the best track that um, Rise Against have, have never written. Uh, it's absolutely, the chorus on this is just insanely good. Um, and I just love the way that the song sort of um, moves along with the uh, the alternate picking muting um, guitar in the verses. So good. And then it, it opens up into the choruses. One thing that this track and, 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 and so many of Templeton Peck's tracks actually um, demonstrates as well is just how clever that they um, sort of uh, embellish their songs with... Um, just little lead lines and stuff where lesser bands would just sort of keep the power chords going and maybe use octaves and things for for just opening it up they also will just put put uh, kev green the guitar player back in vocalist is really um really clever with 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 just some of the little lead the licks and lead lines that are not not particularly um insanely technical or anything i mean it's played well him he needs a special mention as kev because Kev Green is, um, is someone that you can tell really, um, I mean, you can see it from videos and, and live uh, footage. He really attacks his instrument, really rings his um, Les Paul, uh, you know, for everything that, that it can give. Uh, Axis is a track that's one of the lesser talked about tracks. It's a shame. It's actually really quite, for a punk rock song, essentially, it's actually quite progressive. And the whole back half of it um, also, uh, displays a lot of the band's post-hardcore influences um and uh yeah it's a really interesting track and is uh i kind of see track three four and five so you've got the awakening axis and the aftermath as almost like a little trilogy within themselves which then the aftermath is um is track five comes in after there's a video for the aftermath there was two videos from this album by the way the aftermath and sirens um and uh yeah, the aftermath is a is a is a cracking track and is um, probably one of the more sort of popular tracks off the album. Other notable tracks, I mean, I could go in depth on all the tracks. I really could, but as you guys know, I like to keep the video sub ten minutes. Um, Collision Course, track seven. You know my uh, my thoughts on you know track sevens are often the one of the best or if not the best track on the album. Collision Course is fantastic. They really mess with the tempos in this. Um, it's a really uh, again another pissed off track it's there's bits of it where it's super fast honestly John Keane's drumming in this I love the fill he does before um, it, it kicks into the, uh, the, the the super fast section um, again this shows Neil Mitchell uh, has just got an amazing um, super melodic voice that also sounds um, uh, you know as, as as angry as he is without ever losing any of its melody it's just got the gr a really really good amount of um clean and heat in it there isn't a second on this album that i don't like that's the whole mo of should have been huge to me they're perfect 10 albums um but man out of the 10 tracks here uh it's it's the track black hearts what to say about it i mean black hearts is really cool because it's got um it's got like two choruses um and and they're both awesome but there's just this whole section where this lead guitar line comes in and um it just just gives me goosebumps every single time honestly listen to this track black Hearts. it comes in about one minute 50 that guitar line and the vocal line with it and the uh, the drums are just um riding on a crash um and pounding away and it's just honestly it's um it's one of my favorite passages of music but then it goes all up again what i mean by that is just the um super sad sounding um guitar solo that then comes in after that whole passage um just gets me every time one of my that's favorite. it for this one guys as you can tell i'm a huge fan of this uh this album and this band um good news is they're actually in the studio now recording um album number six 
So I can't wait for that because it's obviously been five long years since uh, that they released this. Anyway, um, as always, please subscribe, like, uh, leave any comments. And uh, that's it for this one. Stay rad.